There we go. Now we're live. Hey, Jaglones. How you doing? Um, I'm hoping you guys are having a good night. I'm having a pretty good night. I'm not in the hospital, so that's good. Um, I was really glad to have last week off. Really sad to miss NARBC. Um, there were a lot of people there looking for me, apparently. Uh, Ryan says there's people that wanted to buy my stickers, so I need to get on that. Um, the stickers that look like that. That's not finished yet. I, I really need to do that. Um, it's been kind of busy. Um, what else is new? That's kind of all that's new. We're going to be moving the studio, so it's going to look different yet again. Um, somebody's kind of in formation. So I have to get her out physically to see, but I'm going to leave her alone. She's doing fine. Just make sure she has water and moisture and we're good. I think Aunt Sandy Skinks is the only one here. Today we're going to talk to uh, my friend Ryan Marshall about, oh, Menagerie's here too. Uh, today we're going to talk to Ryan Marshall. You probably saw this, Marshall Arachnids. If you don't know, um, if you haven't heard, I'm a huge fan of Ryan's as a person um, and his lovely wife, Jess, and who's the sweetest sweetheart. Um, and I'm a huge fan of their products. So Ryan and I believe his brother have been working on fabricating different <clears throat> enclosures specifically for arachnids, but you could use them for other invertebrates or micro geckos or whatever. I would, I don't know if Ryan would recommend them for that, but I personally would recommend them. Um, wake up, bingo. She's, uh, she's been a real crab ass when I do. So if she hears me, she'll come out. Sometimes she'll come out if she's hungry, but she hasn't really, she's not eating uh, or really being out at all, even though her enclosure is pretty toasty. Uh, I mean, it's toasty enough. But anyway, uh, enough about bingo. So Ryan came on. He was supposed to come on before he released the uh, the honeycomb and talk about it before it came out, but we didn't do that. So now we have another one that came out and we didn't do that either. Um, and then there's another one since then that may be out. I haven't seen it live yet. So um, hopefully we can introduce that product to you. So as you know, Ryan is like top shelf tarantula keeper. Um, and we're going to trick him into talking about his other spiders that he's available to. Um, cause you know, I'm all about jumpers right now. Uh, without further ado, do here's my home slice, Ryan. Hello, my friend. Thank you for having me again. It is always a pleasure to sit and chop with you and your fans. I know. And I screwed up last time. I, I double booked or I just completely forgot or so. I don't remember. No, we both forgot, which we both forgot. So we both um, forgot. We both of us did. Yeah. It kind of worked out. So you can tell that we're that good of friends. We're, we're great friends. Each other's priority, but we forgive each other. So no, those still... are my best of friends. The best of friends, I say this all the time, are the people that I can just text randomly two months later and be like, "Hey, man," and like as if nothing ever happened, we just start talking again, and that's that's, uh, exactly that's what right. that's what we are because that's 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 my closest friends, my best of friends are that's my relationship with them is like we can go months oh. without talking, and then here we are, like nothing ever happened. So I'm always glad to have new besties. Always. So, yes. um, I feel like if you treat everybody that way, uh, you, life works out better until they prove that they're not worthy of that. Correct. That's how I treat everybody. So I agree. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, you get um, it or you don't. To, it's okay. You know? Yeah. Not to yeah. diminish what we have, our deep, deep connection. But of course not. No offense. Of course not. No offense taken. Nope. Adults have stuff to do. You got to give grace for sure. Yeah. We yeah. Like both forgot. We, we mutually forgot that. Ryan was going to be on the show, so um, yeah, that's all right. Here we are. We're here now, man. No. Now all is right. this is this the PM setup in your tarantula room? I see a lot yes. of setups, and it's very dark. Yep, lights are off. Uh, basically, at this time, Jess and I walk around with a red headlamp and service all the animals. Um, but yeah, lights are out, so animals are uh, popping. It's popping in here right now. That is. Uh, uh, that is a level of dedication. Like, again, the level of dedication you have for your animals. Like, for me still, they're they're inverts. They're like, kind of set it and forget it. Like, once you have a good yeah. setup, you're good. It's done. They're healthy. They're alive. Uh, and that's yeah. fine. But you guys take it to that next level. And I love and appreciate that, that you would go around. Like, just to take that consideration and not just have the lights on extra that night. To walk around with oh, a red yeah. headlamp. And, yeah. 
Yeah, well, it's when we get to see them. We get to check on them. They come out when they're comfortable, right? So then we can actually vis- vis- visually, you know, get eyes on them and check on their health and uh, feed them when they're out and we don't spook them. You know, it's just, and then, you know, I, I like it. I don't know. Some about having the lights off and being dark and dim. I just, I like it. I get a little sleepy, but this is what I like to work in. So it, it all works out pretty good. Um, you can look for your tarantulas, check, see for ghosts. You could make like a ghost hunter show. Dude, all the things. Yeah. yeah, I always, I always wonder what our neighbors think. Like, there's, we don't, we have a couple of neighbors here too, like, to be exact. Yeah. Um, but there's cars that drive by. There's a highway, you know, kind of close. And when I'm upstairs, it's so dark. There's no light pollution out here. But when I'm outstairs, I can see Jessica's headlamp beaming through the window out into the woods, you know, and like out into the roads and stuff. And I always wonder, like, what people must think. I mean, crazy. They call us trans. We're transplants down here, and. <laughs> To make everything weird, I don't tell people what we do, but we have the lights yeah. that beam through the windows at all hours of the night. You know what I mean? And it's just crazy. It's, I, I, I mean, don't. I, no one says anything, but I just wonder what they think. I don't know what it's like there, but we're very pro-trans, whether it's plants or whatever kind of trans. We're pro yeah. that here, so that's good. That's yep. good. Um, yep. Oh, Jedi says he's going to be an adult someday. I'm proud of you, Jedi. I'm proud of you. I don't you know, think man. you're having a mini rave? I don't know about all that. Yeah, they might. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they think. I don't know, man. Maybe the power is that. Maybe the power goes out here all the time. I think just the power is just perpetually out, or we don't have any. We don't have any electricity here. <laughs> like, I don't know. It is wild. Yeah, all of those things are valid you? here. Um, I thought about it. Thought about doing a a few things, kind of, kind of some off grid, um, moves. But to go off grid is truly expensive, and we don't have any money, so. <laughs> it is. It's a huge. Yeah. I hate those people that are like, "I'm off the grid. I, I only put eighty-seven thousand dollars into my twenty square foot trailer. Yeah, and it's fine mm-hmm. now. It's like you can't afford it. It's it's crazy. It is um, crazy. But all right. So I I did a little uh, talking with you ahead of time. So let's get into this, and then we're gonna. You probably heard while I was doing this, but we're gonna talk about spiders too. Let's do so. it. Keep already interested, but not yet. Not yet. So first thing we're going to do is talk about Purple Box. Is there still okay. a sale on the Purple Box, the OG Purple Box? Is that still going on? Uh, yes and no. So we are, if you, mm-hmm. you know, you know this, but to everyone who doesn't yeah. know this, uh, Jessica and I um, have started a new project called Run It Reptile Expo. And essentially what that is, uh, we are in partnership uh, well, actually, Tristan of Gecko Junkie started it. Jessica and I are just helping him move this thing along. Um, and what this is is essentially a, as the name implies, a virtual reptile expo. So um, we are focusing a lot of our time and effort on that. And all of the martial arachnids products essentially are going to be funneled through that project. So, yes, it's still going to, they're on sale until they're gone. Um, but they will only be on sale through Run It Reptile Expo. And we are making that sacrifice in efforts to grow Run It Reptile Expo. So if you want the purple box, you got to participate in the event. See how that works. <laughs> now, the purple box is the OG. Like, that's the original, and it's it's tight. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't have one yet, but I've seen it. Oh, my God. What's going on here? Um, you look great. Seen- no, leave it. Leave hey, it. Leave sorry. it. I see like that. No, I like that. Leave weird. it. Uh, <laughs> looks, looks good. I like that. I like what head. you got going on. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, Sexy. But I really like the design. I like the sleekness of it. I know that you upgraded a lot of things since you created the purple box. Yes. Um, which shows more dedication to it. Oh, uh, Menagerie was at the uh, the Run at Reptile events. Oh, awesome. Or she did. She did two events. Awesome. She did so, two so, events. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, you can any like here's the thing, participation and registration is free. So if you just want to come hang out and see what it's all about, there's no charge to do it. You know what I mean? So, uh, thank you for participating, um, whoever you are. What's her name? Is she if she's come he she comfortable giving a oh uh, that's a name? Heather that's Heather Heather. I can send Cellini? you her information. Selini, huh? yeah, 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 yeah. Selini probably Heather Selini. Uh huh. <laughs> Usually it's just C. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Awesome, Heather. Well, good to see you again. But yeah, so anyway, the purple box is all being funneled through that, and um, and that's that. But yes, it, it, it that it was kind of like what put martial arachnids on the map, so to speak. 
or at least made us relevant. And essentially all we did with that is we just kind of took what was already on the market and just like added our, like what I would want to see. And which has really been all the products we've made is really just like, it's already been there, but like, what would I change about it? And then what yeah. can I do to make that change? And um, it's just worked out for us so far. You know what I mean? Well, and I think that's great because like that mentality, um, I never go through with it, but I would always find a product and be like, this is great but I would do this, this, and this. And you know, you know for sure, uh, especially that I have done that to your products. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, which but I've been that's like, what's this is great, great though. Yeah. yeah, but I would add this and this. Uh, have mm -hmm. you considered this? Um, but yeah, I love I that. Like I welcome that because some of the changes that we've made to our products are directly from the, that feedback. You know what I mean? Because I think you have you have to listen to that feedback. You know, like you can filter filter it, of course, but what people say, the consumer, that's relevant. You got to listen to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you took a baseball back to the ones that were there. Like, well, F this then. Just smashed it no, off. No, no. It's all true. The, the, Josh didn't like the magnets. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I personally like the locks uh, better myself, but I think, you know, a lot of people like, like the uh, magnet. They just do. Yeah. You know? A locksmith. You, what are you talking about? You know, like um, ca a cam lock. So like a locking mechanism as opposed to magnets. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like using an actual turn. I prefer that at this point, at least with the acrylic um, to the magnet. Really? But yeah, but everyone likes the magnet. The only reason being is because, uh, you know, I watch my spiders and I watch how they interact with that magnet and that magnet can kind of yeah. spook them sometimes here and there. But the lock... If it's as long as the operation is smooth, there's none of there's not like jolting. You know what I mean? The magnets oh, okay, have to okay. meet, right? And when they meet, inevitably there's going to be a little bit of this going on okay, with a little yep, okay. cam lock. There's none of that, right? See, and I would have never thought of that either. So um, that's great. Oh hi, I want to say hi to Moon and Crazy Bugs and Pods showed up. Nice. Hey. Nice. We're mm. at our average numbers now. We're doing good. Which I watch other live streams and having eight people on at once is phenomenal so i appreciate yeah. my audience love you guys yeah cheers cheers audience um and Thanks i don't know if hanging. anybody noticed this but i i think that that they definitely jump on the magnet snaps yeah i think that that having that mentality of trying to make the mechanism smoother and uh easier because yeah. our, our spiders are very tactile and uh pressure sensitive and all of that like all of that uh, all yeah. of that would make them jump. So just the air pressure change alone of that thing snapping shut in the enclosed space would definitely freak them out. Like I never thought definitely. of that. So um, yeah, my like I, box thing, <clears throat> I have just a lid that sets on and then I put something over okay. the lid. So that doesn't do any of that, but it's not, it's, it's not very secure. So. Yeah. I'm with you there. Yeah, there's some stuff I wouldn't show on camera too, just because I'm like, oh, if someone saw that, I'd be like, it's gonna get out. But um, yeah, you know, you know, what you, you do, what works, right? You do what works for you. Every situation. Yeah, I mean, there. this particularly worked for me because it was cheap. Um, so all my money goes into my kids and my retirement now. So all right. Yeah, yeah, and my well, prototypes. Your prototypes, so, eh? You didn't see my prototype, uh. Set up for a blue tongue skank some, here. I see something back there. What is that? Prototype. What is that like a bug front? Pool. It's a collapsible know. dog pool. It's about four feet around. Uh, this is just carpenter mesh. Okay. Um, and then this hillbilly lid is like um, the foam you would put on your pipes yep. and more of yep. that carpenter mesh in a big ring. Oh, cool. Um, it was a wrecked version of my daughter's little swing. Uh, she had one of those okay. big circle, looks like a trampoline. Yeah. So I took it down and I cut the whole middle out. And I was like, oh, it broke, sweetie. I don't know what happened. Yeah, it was so too sad. small. <laughs> I did all of that. I didn't measure anything. I cut the whole bottom out of her swing for the lid. And I thought it would be perfect. And it didn't fit. It was too small. No. <laughs> so I did it for nothing. <laughs> you monster. <laughs> so the um, it's about four feet across. And then the dirt in here is about eight inches i want to say it's like eight inches deep now i want to get it deeper um, yeah but i'm trying to see if she'll let any plants grow uh i have yeah. between the mesh and the pool is a divot that i have uh i'm planting seeds 
So I oh, planted cool. a bunch of nasturtium and morning nice. glory because I want it to be all over the mesh. And she keeps eating. As soon as a leaf pops out, she oh, it's yeah. gone. See she chops it right out. So it <laughs> yeah, they keep dying. So we're gonna grow they them in a that. hanging pot. Because the go. lid has a big hole in the middle. It's all open hole in the middle. But um okay. being down here, I have my green screen over right now to help try to keep it a little warmer. Yeah. Kind now how tall how tall yeah. is that mesh portion there? Um probably two feet. Two feet, yeah. Nice. Two feet tall. Yeah. She climbs it because she's a jerk. She'll climb up to the top and you know, test the waters. Sure. She's an escape artist. Yeah. So there's actually like branches and stuff up here too to keep it weighted down. Ah, uh, okay. Like actual branches. So um yeah, but it's a prototype. It needs some work. But when I get time. Hey, yeah, that's how we start with these ideas, right? Well, we're going to grow some dandelions. Uh, she will yeah, eat those. Mm -hmm. Dandelion green, she will eat those. There's dandelion seeds. Um, she eats them as they sprout, basically. So <laughs> I'm going to grow some dandelions in the house uh, for some reason. But yeah, that's just prototype that's ideas. Nice. So very good. I, I feel like, like if you're. Is your mind like mine where everything you build, even if it's like phase 10, it's still a prototype? Oh, yeah. Nothing's ever good enough. Everything sucks. <laughs> everything right? I make sucks. Keep, yeah. You keep changing. So we had the purple box, mm -hmm. then, um, which I love. There's nothing that looks like it really, but the purple bottom or the purple back. Then we've got the honeycomb, which right. uh, I called the hex because I think that's better. But um, the, the honeycomb is great. Uh, you guys remember that we talked about that last time you were on. It's got the yes. light strip or the, the optional light strip. Um, yes, and I have to touch on that because I could. Yeah. So, yes, uh, because I get emails every week of people asking me when they're coming back. I took them out of stock. Um, okay. I could continue to build them as they are, I have the materials to do it, but I, I'm not happy with it. So as time went on, we found out that PETG, the material that the enclosure is made out of, it does yeah. not like to bond to itself like acrylic does, right? And I've been oh. kind of treating it like acrylic. Um, and and it, for the most part, it's fine. Like I still have all of mine that I'm using for my grow out tubs and everything works really great, but it just, it yeah. does not love to be jostled around all that much. Now, if you just sit there, if you set it up and you use it as a bioactive vivarium, it's wonderful. Yeah. But if you like to bang a rang and, you know, move stuff around and it, it just, the material just doesn't love it. So, um, I'm not going to continue to produce that product. I still have everything. Um, but I'm going to try different, wow. um, adhesives to like make it more structurally sound. Right. It's always okay. going to have that flex, but it's, I, uh, that needs to be, that needs, I'm not happy with that. And I know, I know a lot of people that people that did buy them, they love them. I don't love it. So I'm not going to put it out as is. I'm going to try a couple of new things and then maybe we'll, maybe that will come back. We'll see. But also we got to talk about when we're talking about product development, we got to talk about, um, production. And I learned a lot about production. Um, yeah, and how I don't, do I don't have, I don't have time for it. <laughs> Uh, but that's something that as a amateur, like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was just like, this is a cool idea. This is a cool product. I like this. Yeah. Let's sell it. You have to build the damn things. And then like, especially if people like it, you have to build a lot of them and you have to build them fast. Right. Because people want what you're selling. If it works. Yeah. Right. And if they like it, that takes a lot of time. And I completely underestimated how much time it takes to do production in house, um, especially when you have no employees. So that's something <laughs> to take note of. Uh, if you want to sell something is your time. Um, I learned a lot about interns. that recently. Need some interns. Good some... thing we moved out in the middle of nowhere where there are no people. <laughs> uh, we didn't really think about that one all that much. Um, but you need people to hire if you want to, uh, you know, have a production crew or an intern or something. Um, so there's that. That's so true. that. Mm -hmm. 
There's no like loose Appalachian hillbilly kids running around the woods like creepily with banjos up there. I I bet there are several of those. Now, do they want to work and make a quality product with that has to do with spiders? Probably not. I bet you that it does not exist here. Probably not. Probably, <laughs> probably not. not. No, no. It's a niche. It's a niche thing that probably isn't in the mountains, but um, yeah. I bet you could get some of our fans to come out there for intern week, work for a tarantula yeah. and come home. Good. Yeah. 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 Um, good. I don't feed know. Feed them we'll have... and aid. Good to go. Yeah. No, no. People would be fed. I'd feed people. You know, I like to cook, so they'd be fed. I've got a shower now, right? We've got running water. We have electricity. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. I forgot <laughs> that no shower was a thing. Ooh, dude, that was a thing. The last one you were outside. The last one we filmed, you were outside at like a campfire at yep. your in-laws, I think. Oh yeah, yeah. No, see now they now they they've been here a little longer. They have all the amenities. At the time that we were filming back at our place where I'm at now, we did not have a shower. So that's wild. Mm -hmm. That's wild. Well, that's what that's what happens when you build from scratch, and you know you're kind of making things work with a new business trying to get off the ground. You don't have any money. You know, like it's just you do what you got to do, yeah. right? You do what you got to do. Well, yeah. I mean, it work. It's working. It's doing something. So it's doing something. We'll see. Yeah, we have a shower now, so I think I guess we're doing pretty good. Yeah, and you're doing your own uh, your own thing and your own um, digital expos, which I really have to check that out. I, I wasn't aware of all that was entailed in that. So yeah, you got to come hang really out, buddy. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of amazed at how um, it's taken off the way it has. But um, it's gaining traction. We have a lot of a uh, whole. I wish I could show you a flyer. I don't know. Do we have a flyer? I have to grab one. They're we got a whole list of Facebook sponsors page. now. Yeah, you can go on it's our like, Facebook, run a reptile expo everywhere. Yeah, yeah, but. it's all over. So I thought it was. It looked like a straight up expo where they just had your stuff. So I need to do more looking into this. So well, that's that's the thing too. Yeah, here's our. You can find this online. That's got all of our sponsors and the schedule of all the events. But what we're doing is we're we're um go. These are all in person expos, and what we're doing is we're setting up in in the expo and we're running the virtual event so we'll be selling martial arachnids products and gecko junkie products and then what we're doing is we're going around to all the other vendors and asking if they want to submit their animals into the show and then we'll okay. sell them for them during you know what i mean so like anyone from it's like a pay-per-view but you know you're not paying for anything you're just if you want to participate you sign up you see something you like we ship it to you you know i so, love it i love makes it easy shopping virtual shopping so that's awesome something different that, that something could different be huge. could be, yeah you know what i think it is the future i think i don't think it's the future i think it's just part of it you know what i mean i think yeah. there's going to be something to be said for in-person shows but you know, we'll never get rid we'll of in-person shows like i i want hands-on with my animals so so do like, i so do i like not disrespecting it being on because you know some people are you know you trust the person that is running it you know yep um, yourself and Gecko yep. Junkie and top shelf people. So that's great. Yeah. But I'm with you, though. Uh, I, I like to, I, if I can be in person and go to the shows. Plus, there's just something about the atmosphere of being at the shows and seeing all the, the vendors set up nicely and like, you know, presenting their, their yeah. work, their, their product, really. I mean, that's kind of how we're looking at this is like animals in a way are a product. You know what I mean? Like you're selling, yeah. you know, it, 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 don't, you could take that the wrong way, but don't <laughs> you know uh but it is you you are producing an animal and you're raising it to be a healthy specimen and you're offering a product it's your service right service and product so and you develop yeah. it you're a product developer as a professional i'm just kidding as one yeah. of the million <coughs> billion uh ball python breeders that's right <laughs> that's right this is well, that's well. I think that's important to note because what's the difference between ball python breeder A, B, C, D, E, F, Z? You know what I mean? Like, what's the difference? Yeah. And the difference is their branding, is their, their name, their customer service. It's their product, right? Because I yeah. guarantee you, that everyone's selling the same thing at this point with these ball pythons. But what makes one successful over the other is definitely how they market themselves, right? So how they market their product. That's Interesting. True. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so the honeycomb is out mm -hmm. right now until you find a new, like, you're looking for a new uh, material. 
Uh, yeah, so I have one. I have one. I just oh. have not had a second to test it. So I have one. I'm sure. waiting. Yep, yep, I'm getting there. <laughs> but I do have it. Time. Uh, well, I want to do it right, you know, and uh, there's just so many other projects like going on. But yes, I have I have uh, what I want to test and I think it'll work. I'm confident it will work. I just got to try it first and test everything. So perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Yep. Because I couldn't find any pictures of anything but the purple boxes. So yeah, well, you know, you put something out there, you get a million messages, and I feel bad telling people no all day. You know, so I just I was like, just take, just take it down for now, and then we'll bring it back when we're ready, and and, and that 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 will be that. You know, um, we have a lot of spiders like that that the pictures are up because obviously we want to feed the algorithm, the almighty algorithm, and we want people to find yeah. us, but. We get a million messages. When will you have this? When will you have that? And it's like, I feel bad saying no or wait or not sure. You know, that's guilty just part of business. But of guilty people. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, now with these, uh, all of these coming, you have a hollow as well. Is that the one that's actually the hexagon shape? Yes, and um, yes, that's the purple box. And that one, of all the ones that we've made, that's my favorite by far. That is just so cool. I love that one. They did a great job. Um, um, I haven't seen it in person. I haven't seen that one yet. So, um, Well, I've got one. So I actually sold my last one, sold my last one, uh, and run it over the weekend. But I've got one extra one. And um, I'll bring it to you so you can see it. So we talked about... I don't know if we, you and I haven't talked about this, but we've talked about how we're going to push the boxes aside for now, like all of them, um, so that we can focus on our animals and like marketing. We need them to talk about this a little bit. Yeah. You were talking about okay. this at last year's NARBC. Okay. Okay. It. Yep. So the pro it's kind of, it's been in motion, but I've like officially announced it. Now the boxes are not going away. In fact, they'll, they'll probably make a return in some fashion or another um, yep. because it, it really is good for our business. It, it's great. Um, but what I'm finding is again, we talked about time and time management and how much it takes to sell all this stuff. I spend so yep. much time at my workstation or my desk packing orders right like uh the, the box orders which is a great problem to have as a business obviously i'm not complaining but what it, what we're what it's doing is i'm taking it's taking time away from being in my animal room and the animals are what started this business to begin with and the, what yeah. brought us our success and it's not slipping but i know what it can be if both of us are in here spending our time with the animals so that's what we're choosing to focus on for until until i'm happy with where we're at with that. So, um, yeah, yeah, the boxes, the boxes will definitely take a back seat, but there's like, there's so many products like in the queue that I haven't even told you about that. Like we, we just, we have so many ideas. Like we've done the substrates. We've done, we've done the diets. We've done the enclosures. Um, and we've got other little trinkets that like my brother and I have designed and he's already like 3d printed prototypes. And like, they're just like sitting there. I'm just like, I just don't have time for it. But like the brain just keeps going, you know, there's such a need for everything. That's my advice to anybody in the hobby is to like get a 3d printer or get a laser cutter or get a get a machine and just start playing, start tinkering, like look at what people want because there's such a demand and it's not I being bad. Laser cutter so bad. I have an idea. Yeah. Ant farm. Um, yeah. I have an idea for a super premium ant farm and I, I gotta either get one or really get in touch with your brother because uh, <laughs> I have yeah, some he, ideas. He can 3D, he can like 3D render a 3D model for you. Um, but like, and he's got access to some lasers for prototypes, but yeah, man, I, I encourage you to do it. Like, I know the thing is lasers are getting cheaper, but they're still not cheap. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's an yeah, investment. It's a definite it investment. investment. And then you're talking about time again, like putting all the stuff in there to print it out or cut it out and then assembling everything and sanding it down or whatever you have to do. Yes. Um, the post-processing is another thing. Yeah. yeah. The, whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing. That'll be my retirement plan right there. Hell yeah. Um, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Do something like that. So yeah. um, I love that it's just ongoing though. I love that part of it for you guys. That is just ongoing. So the hollow is a hexagon design. How does yeah. that work? 
Like, yeah. is it set up to be a hexagon standing up? And yes. It is a hexagon. Yeah. So it's it, the the product itself is six sided. So it is a hexagon. And you when you okay. turn it and like say if I'm I turn the body and you're looking down the the lid, it's a yeah. hexa like a tubular hollow hexagon, right? Which it's just a cool aesthetic. And I just thought you know we can make it tall enough for fossorial animals. And then of course the minute I release it, I release it for fossorial animals because that's what I was yeah told to do. People are like, can you bake this for arboreal animals? Like literally like the day I released it, I'm like, oh my God. Uh, but that's just the way, it, which is great feedback. You know what I mean? Um, and then if more and more people ask for it, then it's like, okay, maybe I'll do that too. But um, I have that's an idea. the way it works. Hmm. I have an idea. I'm listening. Hear me out. I'm not, I'm listening. So you prototype, you have your, your lid, right? The lid comes off of the, the fossorial. Yes. What does fossorial mean, by the way? <laughs> what is fossorial? Great question. <laughs> So living living underground, like it makes its burrow under the surface okay. of the ground. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's supposed to be deep substrate in the hex. Okay. So hear me out. <clears throat> hear me out. Okay. You make a gasket type of thing, a connector. So the bottom and the top are removable of the hex, of the hollow. Mm -hmm. So you can connect. You can stack them. Like a, like a hamster tube? You just keep going? Uh, no, like, um, kind of, yeah, but you would just have the body of it so that the bottom would plug on and the lid would plug on. I see what you're saying. So you're stacking. And then you swap. Yeah, so they're just like extendable tube, but not, not like a hamster tube where they're all over the place. Like it. I see. Yeah. Although but tarantula habit trail would be badass. Like, that would be so fun to watch. Oh, I keep thinking about that. Like, so I've never, like, taken a scope and, like, looked at one, but, like, I don't know how to yeah. do this. So, like... If you're, if you're, if this is, this would be the entrance, they say they do this and then they go up. Like they're not just like sense. down, like they go down and then they go up again. So like, that's a so really I, good idea. I've never it seen something raised. shaped like that. Yeah, exactly. And raised, then you could, right? you can yeah. thermoregulate that way as well. Right. So there's many uh -huh. aspects to that. Right. But, um, yeah, so that'd be cool. I want to see, let's see if I can get my tarantula into an old, uh, I think I have old habit trail in the garage. Yeah. Out. I don't know. You'd probably never get it out of those tubes, but I bet it, I bet okay. it'd like it. Yeah. <laughs> it was something to do. Enrichment. Yeah, if it's you happy, know? whatever. Yeah. I don't need to get it out. Fill the main body of it with dirt, you know, give it mm -hmm. substrate and water, keep everything there and then let it, let it, let it be a around. spider. Yeah. I really do leave her alone, Menagerie. I really do. I drop food in there. I, pop in to clean it when she's not out and that's it that's it's really all we do together is how long have water. you had that how long have you had it I can't mm, remember. two years now i think oh, okay okay two years For some reason, I i'm like 90 percent sure since... she's a boy i'm 90 percent uh, sure she's a boy so probably got another year left something like that right well it depends. Has, it mat has it matured yet the sexually matured? oh yeah yeah so you so, see the, the, the sex organs on the pedipulps? I haven't really looked. I didn't look that close. No. You send me a look. picture and I'll, I'll tell you. You send me a picture, I'll tell you. Okay. All right. Of the spider when, when, when it's out. Yeah. He's still yeah. Um, relatively friendly. Like I can put my hand in there and uh, he'll come up and check it out. But not like probing, but he's not diving into the burrow when I go over. So that's nice. Interesting. Yeah. That's always good. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's the reason I got a rose here. Yeah. The reason I got one is, or Arizona, it's Arizona blonde. Okay. Um, is that my buddy, uh, oh my God, my buddy over at Sophie Spider Verse, uh, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. Rick. Yep. His came out and put its hand, like it put its little paw, like right on me out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I just had my hand near it and it came right out and put its, paw right on my finger and i was like all right i'm a tarantula person now um, yeah <laughs> that's all it yep. took like i didn't approach it at all so it was really cool yeah and Peko did a 36 inch tall enclosure for a tarantula to see how deep it would dig i bet it went all the way to the bottom i i bet it did i bet it did mm. oh the males even have a long life good 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 yeah that species they do but you'd have to send me a picture because I I'll, I can tell you right away if it's mature or not. And if it's mature, I mean, even at, okay, even with that species, you, you, I think you've got longer than that. But okay, we'll see. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I definitely got to get her him into a habit trail and uh, see what happens. <laughs> yeah, of course. What happens. Yes. That's what we're saying here. Yeah. <laughs> Peko did a crazy enclosure. Now, this has to be – was this online or something? Or, or is this a website? I bet it's, uh, You're not talking about a, the store, uh, Petco. They're not talking about Petco, the store. I think they're, they're not. Talking they're talking about, yeah, Dark Den. Um, oh, Dark yeah, Den he's got he's got good stuff. Yeah. Dark Den. I, I watched him do a feeding or something where the tea got away, and it was a aggressive. Or it didn't get away, mm. but it, it gave him a run for his money, and it was really yeah. fun. He's, like, kind of scared of the spiders. He's respectful. I am. Yeah, also, yeah he's yeah, respectful. Like yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, no, there. There's been times where I, I'll go to feed one of our large Zenestis or Pamphobedius, and it the like they they do this thing where they're like they get real excited and they just kind of end up flopping out of the enclosure sometimes. And at that point, I'm like, Jess, I'm this is all you, man. <laughs> I'm not messing with this. And then she's like, God, I told you to shut the door. <laughs> now but, your um, initial thing was not spiders, right? You were the frog guy. Yeah, I worked with amphibians. Yeah. For the longest time yeah. and you know really before that reptiles but yeah amphibians is what i did professionally and i love the spiders obviously don't get me wrong they still but i have that healthy fear respect for them you know what i mean yeah. still, they still they make a fine me, line that no, big time yeah the fine line yeah my pamphobedius is such a jerk it's the only one that makes me jumpy yeah they've got a tremendous feeding response like unlike any other of the the genus it's pretty amazing yeah is that a new world they world are world? yes 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 they're south american oh, okay all right cool, cool, yeah cool. very very large growing now um this swinger that you're talking about has that been released yet have people seen the swinger setup yes and i feel like such a dick because i told we made an announcement on the facebook we're like we're gonna put it on the website <laughs> we just never did it and it's, <laughs> it's so stupid i feel stupid but um yeah for this jess jess is in the background over here um of course she is she misses the show too i'm sorry i missed you last time jess ryan jess and i slept is, uh, on it yeah that we he's sorry that we missed the show remember that time we forgot we both forgot that we were supposed to do the show yeah Anyway, um, we're talking about the swinger. Yeah. Um, yeah, so anyway, yes, that is. So basically what we did is we took our 8812 purple box and then we, we just put heavy-duty acrylic hinges on the side. And then um, the plan was initially to make that a lock and key, but I was too shy about doing that right out the gate. I made it a magnetic shut, which has its pros and cons. Um, but I like that because you can stack them next to one another and then you can open the door without hitting the, without it's the neighbor, correct, yeah. without hitting the neighboring enclosure. Um, and when I eventually do bring the purple box back, I think all of the enclosures will probably, probably be hinged just because that is just so much easier. Yeah, it's just so much easier. And I think people will disagree, but here's the thing. I don't care that much. And uh, <laughs> I don't care that much because if you want a slider, there will be sliders for you to buy from reputable companies. So like, I want yep. to do something different that I like, and I think it will, I think people will still feel the same way. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, can argue um, with it, but you're fucking wrong. <laughs> no, no, it's not that they're wrong. No, it's not that they're wrong. <laughs> it's just, this is, this whole thing has been like, what would I, what do I want to see? Right. I can't sell it to you if I don't like it or if I don't, if yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? Like, at least I don't feel good about it. But for this reason, it's yeah. like, I know people get several of these enclosures. I know because I see it online all day long and I can't put them next to each other without staggering them. And that drives me as someone who has a collection, I guess, uh, insane that like, it's not functional like that. You know what I mean? If you want it's just kind of one more... enclosure, sure. That works. But does it go all the way from one side to the other? Like the hinges across the whole front or is it like exoterra thing where it's like, God, I wish I could drop a picture. Do you have your phone? That's Jess is going to, yeah. Can you pull up a, the picture of it? No. It's so it, like the hinge is just on one side. Um, and then I think I have an evolution of this. Like that. I would. Drop a picture in the chat? I don't, can you? Can Jess drop a picture in your, your stream yard chat? 
or on YouTube? Uh, she can send me a picture through Facebook Messenger, and I can. Okay, she's going to do that. I can pop um, it in, or she can. I can send her the link, and she could pop in as a guest kind of. It'll give us all kinds of weird. No, well, it might not give us that. feedback because you're not. She'll just send you a picture. That's fine. Yeah, just send me a picture. That's good. I'll pull up my Facebook. But I'm really inspired. Like, I go to the um, – a lot of these vendors – are making really cool PVC enclosures, not for spiders, but for geckos. And what I'm noticing is the hinge is on the front face. It's not like on the corner okay. where it like pivots. It's like on the front of it. And I'm like, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> that is such a good idea. Um, because then you don't have this like obtrusion sticking out one side, which is the hinge, right? Everything's yeah. on the front. So it doesn't impede anything. I'm like, well, that's, yeah. that's the next, that's the next step is to do it like that. Um, hey, here's a thought. Here's a thought. Hmm, you put, I'm listening. Um, like a felt or a a thin like cloth or felt that would look cool over the magnet. So when you do shut it, it's like softer, buffered. Mm -hmm. There it's is a material. Like... Yeah, I've thought about that. There is a material, um, and it's not not so much felt. It's like a soft rubber almost that sure. I could slide sure, over yeah, the yeah. magnet. And it, it's like a cushion. I thought about that too. But then I would have to, on every single enclosure that I sell, put that stupid, <laughs> put that ring on each magnet to like buffer it. And oh. I start thinking like, no, but you're right though. But like, these are the things that I've learned. It's like, okay, if I sell a hundred of these a week, that's one, two, yeah. that's 300 times. I have to put this extra thing on bro there. Just, bro oh, just give them a little baggie of those rubber things and be like and have them do it for you yeah yeah that's that's probably the move and then like be like it's optional if you want to do it you can if not that's just, yeah. just you have to send it to me on facebook messenger send like, it not to me on here. facebook messenger it's johannes washington washington she's doing it she's gonna send it to you on facebook I got that name from uh, John Travolta himself. So yeah, well, I like it. An app. It was. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers when John Travolta was announcing a winner of one of the Oscars, and he messed up their name really, really badly. It was. It was like not even close. So this is MySpace. <laughs> this is in the days of MySpace. So MySpace had an app thing that um, you could plug your name in, and it would tell you what John Travolta, how he would say it. And oh, that's awesome. That's how I got Johannes Washington <laughs> at it for 15 years, 15 years, 16 years. Beautiful. This is a purple box. All right, let's see. All right, I'm going to share screen. Da, 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 da. Zippity doo da. I'm getting pretty good. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Share. There's the swinger. There we go. There's a swinger. Yeah, so see those All big right. old hinges there on the side. You can see them right here. Now, that was my compromise. So for the longest time, I didn't want to do hinges with acrylic. I didn't want to do acrylic ever, period, because I hate acrylic. But I didn't want to do hinges because they creak. They make, they, they're make they very noisy. But I came okay. across these, and we tested these, and they are like the, the bee's knees, dude. Like, they're super heavy duty. They don't creak. They've got a – they don't – they're real thick, so they don't warp. They're awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Look I at like this. People are saying, let the customer, let the customer put their rubbers on. Don't put the rubbers yeah. on the customer. <laughs> Especially not at an expo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you said I could say what I want on this episode. And you absolutely fine. can. And you're right. I'll let the customer put their own rubbers on. That's, that's the, that's the move if we were to do this again. But again, I, I think we're going to go with the cam lock on the, on the next ones. But um, I think it's yeah. a good idea. If that's what you're into, like you have to do it. So um, yeah, the only thing I'm hesitant about is like the cam locks are, they have like a zinc. I think they're made of zinc or some okay. sort of metal metal. So I got to see like if that whatever alloy that is, if it rusts, if it rusts and it looks like shit over time, then I'm not going to use it. But I, I don't know if they do or not. I don't know. I mean, how much? Sure. Well, I guess you are using some hydration for a lot of these guys. Humidity is pretty high. I mean, I am. I, I so, don't know what everybody else is doing. But, you know, if I can rust it, someone else will rust it. So I got to I got to make my sure. Deal. Here's my deal. If you're watching this and you're considering to keep your tarantulas in a Marshall Arachnids official setup. Then you should follow the martial arachnids, like husband techniques. 
unless you can do better. If you can do better, then tell then me please to go. do. No, shut if up. you can tell me to shut hey, up. But if you can do better, please share it with me because I, I yep. would like to learn how I can do it better. That's that's. I my mean, there advice. are people I think <laughs> that are on the level with you. I don't watch a lot of tarantula videos, but I've been watching like tarantula cat lately and tarantula cribs, mm -hmm. and because um, I really want tarantula cat to come on the show. Um, yeah, I should probably just reach out to her, right? That's all um, it takes. Yeah, I should probably do that. Cat seems super nice. Um, she is. She's she's very nice. I mean, of course, people have different techniques or whatever that you know it are, but in my opinion, in my observation, they're similar quality. You guys are all about on the same quality and the same dedication and yes. the same education. You know what you're talking about. Um, so, you know, go with that. You guys have done your homework. Um, you're in that tier where you've done your homework. You know your stuff. You're officially educated. Um, <laughs> in these things, I mean, you can do all the quotes you want. Like, you have a degree. So, maybe not no, a retina. No, I'm an idiot. Jess has the degree. I, I mean, I have a degree, but not in this stuff. So I like to be not very clear spiders. about that. No, no, she's got a she's she's a zoologist. I'm just a dummy oh. who got lucky. Yeah, <laughs> got extra lucky. All right. Well, extra still lucky. okay. Well, Jess, then I, I'm saying Marshall arachnids as a thing. Yeah, that's say Jess you. too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't I'm say Ryan. Selfish. Okay, I'm being selfish. Yeah. Never gonna disrespect Jess. Um, no, no, no. Tell no, Jess no. I'm saving up to get a sloth. Uh, Josh thinks he wants a sloth. No, I know got, I want a sloth. You got I think an eye I can roll. Handle. I got an eye roll? Yeah, you got an eye roll. I'm not going to promote it, but believe me, no animal will be more loved. So there's a uh, veterinarian almost, in Illinois who apparently yeah? breeds them. Apparently Is that right? There's a veterinarian that breeds sloths in Illinois. Yeah, they breed slow wow. enough that it's like... He doesn't have like 20 of them. He's of got like a couple and they have babies. And then he sells the babies to people that he deems are quality um, enough. Right. So it's right. like handpicked owners. Um, and I met two of his sloths at a show. Okay. And uh, I've, I've never instantly loved an animal more than this. Because I got to have contact with him. You get to like sit down and, and this one wanted to play. All it wanted to do was play with me. Nice. So, have you seen Zootopia? Have you seen that movie? Yes, I have. Yeah, the DMV. You know how the sloth, sloth the sloth DMV guys, like, uh, like, yeah. That's how it came at me to play bite. Yeah. And I laughed so hard. It was exactly that face. Yeah. And it was the funniest thing ever. She's like, "Oh, don't let him grab you." And I was like, "How do you avoid it?" Oh no. Right. Yeah. It's super <laughs> difficult. So, um, I'm glad I got the eye roll. Then she does have a a degree in zoology that's perfect oh yeah yeah she's she's cared for sloths before um we had a sloth at detroit i think but what was his name i don't know i can't remember there were a couple um i worked with one and i didn't work with it but there was one in omaha when i was there and it would always leave the comfort of like the tropical like jungle area and it would like find its way to the lobby like it, like it, like it, like it was, it was just always in the lobby. Yeah, we're like what? The, what are you doing? Like, what's the hangout? Anyway. Yeah, it was just hang out, wanted, or he was like, I'm leaving. But um, yeah, it was, was like, I know fun. I could smell funnel cakes. Nobody brings me one. What the hell? Yeah, and I, I like. I always wanted to know. I wish they would put cameras there because I was always like, how how did you get there? How did you get into the lobby? Like, I don't. I'd love That's to so see funny. that happen. Yeah. I, I, it's cool. I was surprised. It's, cool. it's a cool animal. I was surprised to be able to see like intelligence in their eyes. I thought they would oh, yeah. be like looking at a blank, right, like not, no one's there. home. Yeah. yeah, you can see that they're still like calculating. There's something there. It's not yeah. moving quick, but it's there. Um, yeah. I'll talk to Jess more about sloths later. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she'll. Have... She could talk me out of it. She'll probably talk she'll me try. out of it. She'll try. Which okay. is good, you know. You can always you gotta you gotta listen to the opposing view. I think to make a to make well, an informed my, decision. So so far, everyone in my circle has tried to talk me out of it, but they're all stupid. So right, they're obviously wrong. They don't know what they're talking about, so I can't really take their advice. Right, I so I do understand that. But if I could get somebody who's smart that knows what they're talking about, to uh, Heather, don't tell Val I said she was stupid. 
So uh, <laughs> she's stupid about sloths and thinking that she could keep me from getting one. Yeah, uh, what happens on live streams stays on live streams. Okay. Until she finds out that I have a tarantula, which she did, and it wasn't good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lips are sealed. I don't care about your lips. Is your keyboard sealed? That's what I'm worried about. Um, so I can ask her cats a sweetie. Yeah, ask her for me, Heather. I'll get cat on the show. Um, what was I gonna ask you next? We're gonna talk about spiders. We weren't gonna we weren't supposed to go to sloths, but that's okay. That's okay. Spider sloths, it's all right. It's all in the same vein. We can Before talk we about... get to spiders, how did you meet Jess? And is Jess the spider person? Because you were not the spider person originally, apparently. Great question. So I met Jess at Detroit. I worked in the amphibian conservation. What do they call that building? National Amphibian, National amphibian Conservation Center. I was a keeper there. And Jess worked at the Belle Isle Nature Center, which was kind of like under Detroit Zoo's umbrella. And the, for some reason, Jess was under the umbrella of the amphibian department. It's just zoos do weird things like that. But that's where I met Jess. I would actually go out to Belle Isle um, and fix the plumbing on the salamander tanks. <laughs> and that's how I met Jessica. As a plumber. Yeah. You met Jessica as a salamander plumber? Yeah, professional plumber, jack of all trades here. Uh, yeah, but basically I was just redoing their exhibits. Um, and that's, that's how I met Jessica. Um, and she was not the spider person, so I had actually been keeping the tarantulas for a few years before I met Jess. And then I gave her her first one, which was the same one that I started with, the Postletheria metallica, the blue ones. I gave her oh, her first. God. And, I uh, want one of those, but like, yeah, you're so pretty. So pretty. beautiful, yeah. That's the first one I ever even considered because I didn't know they existed. Uh, I know, same, see, same. You've only seen me at your booth. You should see me go around to this day, and I'll see them like, oh, I freak out, and then I'll try to deal with the guy. Like, so, uh, what do you want for this thing? I just peed my pants <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah. Best I can do is sixty-five. Um, yeah, I'm the yeah. worst. I'm the haggler. I am. The yeah. Haggler. Yeah, you're that guy. Uh, but I'm the worst at it because I go, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then I try to get a discount. It's real dumb. It's real dumb. No, I like that you can't contain your excitement. It's honesty, and I like that. Um, but now to spiders. That's a beautiful story. I love that you met Jess in the amphibian room, which is weird. <laughs> uh, uh, since she kind of wasn't even supposed to be there or is like under that umbrella. Yeah, it's really weird because out there too, they had like fallow deer and other mammals that she had to care for. And like, I would like pretend that I wanted to go help clean deer poop just to hang out with her, which I would never in my life ever want to do that. <laughs> That's you one know. of the most beautiful stories I've ever heard. I cleaned That's, deer poop for you. Yep, I, I did. I sucked it up and uh, thought, I was like, yeah, I would love to go do that. That sounds great. You need help with that, right? <laughs> None of my zookeeper friends will answer this question, but um, I, honestly, I've had five or six zookeepers on the show. Okay. What happens to the poop? What do you mean? What Where does it go? Poop? It gets thrown away, usually. Um, some zoos have, like, what do you call those things that turn bio digester or whatever compost digesters that they like put put it in there and it somehow generates energy don't ask me how i don't know how that works um but most of the time it generates it gets, energy they get power yeah. from the poop yeah poop power like literally that's they like flush a piece piece. <laughs> that is the pr stuff. no they don't flush anything it's like put in this room <laughs> I don't. they harvest the heat you know yeah because you know how like uh, undulates yeah, Jess is telling me how it all works, and I'm not paying attention. But yeah, it just it I makes kind energy. Of hear her. She's saying it's the heat. Yeah, um, it generates heat. Um, that's just one avenue. So like, otherwise, it gets literally like thrown in the trash, or they're like zoos have a lot of property. They'll just like let it compost and digest somewhere else away from some public. Big mountain in the back. Like literally a mountain of pupe. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I've heard uh, stories about like pre-automobile New York City and okay. the sheer amount of horse crap they had to take away. Every oh yeah, day. 
like a mm-hmm. million pounds a day. Yeah. Um, what a nightmare. Yeah, what literally, a nightmare. what a nightmare. Like mammals are disgusting. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're pretty gross. I don't like cleaning yeah. up after hamsters. So. Right. It's just I'm not so good. it's different. It's different. Something different about it. And we're still not talking about spiders. So we can talk about spiders. I, Sorry. What do you want? What do you want to talk about? I got a couple questions. I got a couple things I want to touch on. So I saw a photo that you posted of, uh, I, I think you got this at NARBC. Yeah, you were there. Uh, it is a deli cup with a big mass of what looked like paper towel in there and another big mass of baby huntsman spiders, I think. Oh, I think that's hold what on. It was. Stay right there. <clears throat> you still got it. Guys, I'm going to walk away and turn off this light that's making me look washed out. But I can still hear everything. Yeah, I've got them right here. They actually probably need to be fed. You need to feed them every night. Every night? Wait, you got to open that thing every night? No. So what we do, see this little... Uh, yes. So we take that Some out. Spy. And then we use a condiment thing and like squeeze the, squeeze the flies in there. Now, They're about due uh, to be separated. But they're not eating each other yet. They're still eating all the flies that we put in there. So, People who watch my show and maybe watched it last time I was on, uh, I, I have an invention for that. So, I'm listening. So you take your fruit fly culture and you have a hole in the side that you put uh, tubing through. <laughs> like, uh, like tubing you would use to maybe siphon water from a fish tank. Yeah. Like half inch. Yeah. Okay. Seal that on there. Just have a little plug on the end. So when you need to feed fruit flies, you just open it up. Mm -hmm. You could run a second tube right to the spider thing through that hole in the lid. Yeah. Yeah. Just Or you could put them in a condiment thing. No, they actually, I mean, they could use a constant drip of flies, the constant supply. Actually, do you guys do feed those? I think they're like, yeah, they're ready. We'll feed them every night, but we haven't done it yet. So, Uh, but yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, So are you going to use that uh, hole to... Are you going to use that hole to uh, get them out one by one? Because this is my question. That was the lead up to my... No. When you decide so th- to cup them individually. Yeah. So we'll, we'll probably change this on the fly. But I think it's the, the idea is going to be bin with the cup in the center, inside a bin, inside a bin. Um, and then that's how we'll do that. <laughs> yeah. One of those. I'm, I don't know. I'm sure I'll be there for it. I don't want to be, but I'm sure I'll be there for it. So a bin and a we'll bin see. and a bin because I, just seeing how fast they are in that cup. We just held the cup yeah. up that flurry. They're incredibly uh, fast. Yeah. That's going to be a nightmare. Luckily, they don't like travel very far. So if you put them in the middle of something, right, then that, that's rather spacious. They don't yeah. keep that speed for just like infinite amount of time. They just like do a little burst okay. and then they stop and they do a little burst and they stop. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you have you have a second. You're not just gonna, yeah, because you can't just like yeah, grab I, them. You can't just like no, grab them and pick them up. No, you like you have to k- kind of just like coax them into whatever you're gonna put them in. Which at this point, I think it'll be one ounce deli cups. I'm not really sure per spider. I'm not really sure. Two ounce, two ounce deli cups says Jess. So she's the boss. She's the boss. She's boss. It's whatever, whatever she says. Oh, these little uh, paint brushes. Or makeup brushes, soft bristles. That's a good idea. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, I, you probably That's... already do that, but yeah. Uh, no, it's a, we don't use paint brushes. Why don't we use paint brushes? Um, I feel like I have more control. Than I oh, she says it's a control thing. She's got more control with her fingers. She says. Okay. All okay. Right. Yep. That's why we don't do it. Uh, yeah, well, she's wrong, but that's all right. That's all right. No, that's good. Whatever works. Whatever yeah, works. We do. Use we do use a lot of tools. Ants. Yeah, that's a good. Now that I would do. Yeah, because yeah. they go. They <laughs> they don't do a small burst of speed. They're gone. Really? So they keep you gotta going. be on top of it. Yeah, they're not as fast, but they they don't stop. So. Right. Um, what species is that? Because you were super excited to have that that sack. Yeah, um, so that was a breeding loan between us and Buddha bugs, and that is purple huntsman or Heteropoda lanula. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, purple huntsmen. They're beautiful. So they're very intimidating, but like, um, they're very simple to keep. They're not aggressive. Yeah. Um, okay. Very, yeah, they're they're great. 
the like that what we treat them just like the tarantulas. Um, what's the leg span, Jess? Leg span? Yeah, inches? four inches maybe. Other on the smaller okay. side of huntsmen's. Yeah. Reasonable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's still a, like when they they have an intimidating look. They're big enough to look intimidating, but they're they're actually really simple pets. They're great. They're great. My daughter is like uh, I was showing her the jumpers on your page while I was looking uh, for the the swinger box and the the hex. Yeah. Or the the honeycomb. Sorry, it's always gonna be the hex to me. I'm sorry. I don't care. No, you wanted to call it the hive. You wanted to call something the hive. The hive. The that hollow. You wanted to call the hollow the hive, which I should have done. That that I regret not doing that. Arboreal. Yeah, but we talked yeah. about if we make an arboreal version, that will be the hive. Oops. Yeah. I fucking knew for it. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. Make, yeah, you can you can design the uh, logo for that one or the graphic. I will come to NARBC and autograph them for people. Um, you should. And put an ISO Buddy sticker right on there. So, let me know. Mm -hmm. Let me know. I'll yep. be there. I could be I'm there down. all day next time. Perfect. So hooked up to an IV. I don't care. Whatever it takes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That good. I, I'm holding you to it. I don't care if you're sitting in a hospital bed and getting your ass out of bed and you're gonna you're I'll gonna have my nurses bring the bed with sure. me. They um, can come too. They can come too, whatever. I'm that patient that half the nurses probably go home and tell people and laugh about how funny their patient was or how terrifyingly how terrified funny he is yeah and the other half are like this son of a bitch like the other half absolutely hate me so uh i'm okay yeah. with both of those things that's okay yeah uh, you know i'm scared i'm in there i'm scared like let me yeah have my it's definitely it's an uncomfortable place right. for sure uh, um next spider question so the ogre faced netcaster spiders you had them at the NARBC last year that I was at. Not this one, but the one before. Yes. Um, they are tiny. Like how how big are the adults? Because I saw the ones that you had were like teeny. Yeah. So that's almost <clears throat> like jumping spiders. Like when you see the actual size of a baby jumping spider versus an adult, yeah. you're like, how can that be the same thing? The Dan Opus are the same way. They're... Um, I think the adults, if I had to guess, are probably oh, yeah, wow. three inches. Jess says, really good, size, especially when they're when they're doing their thing, you know, when they're all yeah, when they're holding yeah. the net, you know, they 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 look quite a bit bigger. And we're talking about a smaller African species here. That's what we're working with. But when they're babies, I mean, yeah, it's unbelievably small. But it's they just exponentially grow with every molt. So that's awesome. Um, because like this super that cool. tiny, I was like, uh, that's cool, but. Yeah, you can't see it. Because <laughs> they don't show it. When you watch it on shows, and God forbid, like, don't watch Monster Bug Wars, but when you see them on Monster Bug Wars, okay, definitely watch Monster Bug Wars because the sound effects that they add to the insects are hilarious. Is um, that a YouTube thing? What is that? No, it was a show on, like, Discovery. So they would, like, tell you all oh. about a certain, like, scary-looking insect, and then they'd show okay. you another one. And then mm. they'd kind of, like, put them together. Uh, they would put them together and it would be in like a terrarium style setup. Like it, it wasn't supposed to look like that, but it absolutely was. And they were usually things that would never meet in the wild. So yeah. that part sucked, but they would have like, a, a, they'd be like, Oh, a jumping spider versus uh orchid mantis. Right. And so similar size kind of. Um, so they'd have the, the jumping spider show up on screen and they'd be just looking at it with a macro lens or something. And you'd hear like, like oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> they like growl <laughs> and roar and make these like, these like 1970s dinosaur movie noises. It was just great. It was just great. Uh, when uh, was this? They, is this still a thing or when was this? You can look it up on YouTube. They have it, it is on, on YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Yeah. You can look it up I'm there going, now. It's I'm from going like, to. Yeah. It's from like old Animal Planet. Animal Planet or. Uh, okay. I think it's Animal Planet. But, um, okay, so, wait, we had a question here. What are you That's all it. using for strubs, for substrate? Um, that really depends on the species. Um, yeah. We, yeah, so lately we've been buying, what's that called? The re reptile, what is that shit? Repti yeah, Reptisoil, maybe something similar. Yeah, like if we're not making our own, we keep it relatively simple, but we don't just use like one thing. I don't use coconut fiber. 
Um, I like to use things with lots of various particulate in it because the more things you have that make up the soil, like yeah. the more things tend to use it. That includes plants, microfauna, the spiders can excavate things easier. So a mix of things. Okay. Um, but ABG is good. So like if you go to Pangea or something.com, you can yeah. find their ABG mix. Uh, Bio Dude has like, he has his Terra Arrhenius stuff which is fine for them for the prices you get what you pay for with that it's cheap um but it works um but i've really getting, been happy uh, getting with some bad reviews of him in the comments so <laughs> yeah so my beef with bio dude they are incredibly good at mark i've said this before and so i don't feel bad saying it um they're very good at marketing incredibly good at marketing actually so like business owners take note of how good they are at marketing the problem with uh yeah so like the problem <laughs> with bio dude is that like they say their stuff does a million things that it doesn't do but they're doing it ah. in the sake of marketing so like to someone who doesn't know any better it's yeah. the most incredible product on the market period it does a mil it does everything your animal will live forever yeah you know what i mean uh, because it's got everything it needs, but like it's like literally three ingredients that they don't tell you what it is. So that's bio dude for you. Um, okay. But in terms of what you're what you're paying for and, and whatever, it, it's, you get what you pay for, right? It's fine. Yeah. But sure. um, but you know, honestly, like if you go to Stay Frog fishy. Daddy, yeah, Fro okay. Frog Daddy, uh, Alex Menke, he makes a beautiful bioactive substrate. Roly Boy um, Ben um, makes a good <clears throat> soil that we've used. I suppose it's um, anonymous. <laughs> Kyle at iSpots Anonymous. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, up. yes. Call him up. Yeah. So that's my advice is use what the isopod people are using. <laughs> they okay. have this figured out. Yeah. The isopod right, Joe, people have it, have it figured out. Yeah. He has, um, he's actually working on multiple soils for different, uh, or substrates for different species. So he has like a millipede one. He's got an isopod one. He's got, that's the move. I think like a tropical isopod one. He's working on a bunch of different things. So, um, and uh, like your traditional flake soil, I wonder, I'm going to reach out and see if you'd be interested in doing, trying to do like a, a setup tarantula one, like specific. So it has more bulk for them to burrow through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So like, and that's what I said, it's species specific. So like, I wouldn't use the same thing that I would use for like my, one of my arboreal species or like, or like a tropical species versus an arid species. Cause it just, you gotta yeah. just look at where they come from and what they're interacting with. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely look at the bioactive stuff. Yeah. 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 A lot of, so Good. like a lot of people too get confused with the word bioactive. It's such a buzzword and the, they'll get turned off yes. by it if they don't want to do a bioactive approach, but yeah. um, usually bioactive soils have that multi particulate kind of um, stuff going on. Like, so usually the animals yeah. can use them better than just coconut fiber or peat moss. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's what I would recommend. I've soils. been telling people it's like using um, live rock if you're having a coral tank. Like exactly. Yeah, it's already got some microorganisms in it. It's it's a living thing by itself, more or less. Um, yes, there's no point in not using a bioactive substrate. There's no, it, there's no non benefit. It's silly to not if you have the option. It's silly to not use it, and it's not really much more than buying organic topsoil by itself at yeah Lowe's or something. You know, it's not it's not the price isn't so much higher that it's. Uh, an excuse not to use it. <clears throat> I agree. Yeah. And honestly, like one of the, one of the things that we were proud of when we made our soils is like, we would list the ingredients and we would do that on purpose because we wanted people yeah. to see exactly what they were buying. And if you wanted to DIY, take a look at that list and then just source those components yourself and then mix it to whatever species you're working with. You know, I mean, that's, that's what I would recommend, but any good, any good supplier or manufacturer of, of these things will tell you what's in it. They should. And if they don't, I would they be skeptical. Should. There you go. That's what I should have. That's what I should have led with. <laughs> they don't tell you what's in it. Maybe don't buy it. <laughs> hey, that's a that's a good policy. I think we can all get behind that. Like you want to know what's yeah. in everything you eat. Why wouldn't you know? Yeah. You know. Yeah. You would want to know if there's asbestos in your carpet. You I would. Know, hope. That's for you. Yeah. Yeah. Same concept. Not great. Not right. great. 
Um, you're doing live plants in all of your setups, basically, aren't you, for your, your teas? Some kind of live plant. Yeah, most of them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is great. I think that, like, not only is that aesthetically pleasing, it's just good for them. Um, yeah, I think so, too. Like, it changes with the environment. I think a lot of people like to get hung up on, like, oh, I don't want to. And it's like, no, you, like, you don't have to. Um, I don't think the animal cares one way or another. I like to do it because it adds another layer of keeping that I find exciting, right? I like, we like yeah. the live plants. We like the way it looks. It changes with the environment. It's enriching. Uh, the plants grow. They need to be trimmed back. The animals really like to enjoy drinking off of that foliage. I think it's more natural for them. You don't have to do it yeah. to have a happy spider. But yeah, we, we definitely love the live plants. And it's like looking at a, a vivarium with the live plants and the lighting and all that, like we have a lot of animals. But like when I walk into the room and see that versus like a opaque shoebox, floor to ceiling, like it just, I, I feel better. <laughs> like, I don't know. I yeah. just feel better about what I'm doing. So like it, it's a personal thing. You know, you don't have to do it, but I would. I like it. I mean, you're I surrounded. You are like, I get to see setups, floor to ceiling. It's oh, yeah. super dark. We I can't tell. They're, they're probably <laughs> in every direction. Um, they are. Yes, you're right. To just look at them be like a cork tube or something in each one and some substrate, 90% of yeah. the time, it would be, yeah. eh, Why? Why? Yeah, I mean, to each their own. You know what I mean. But I, I don't, I don't like. I wouldn't like it. I guess. I don't know. There's just so much more to it. Like, you could. Yeah. And and I think those work just as well. I think the animals would be fine with those, one way or another. But mm, yeah, you know, they yeah, get. Antaresia maculosa. What is that? I have no idea. Just probably told me right away. I don't know what that is. He's got a. He's got an ant. Antaresia maculosa. I haven't said that right, so I, I deserve some points on that one, guys. Can you put um, it on the screen? I can, yeah. Oh, maybe. It just went. There we go. Uh, Jess, come here. It's not a spider, apparently. It's oh, yeah, what totally is off topic, apparently. Antaresia maculosa? Python. Oh, spotted python. Awesome. Um. Yeah, I think FedEx, good news is, is FedEx should be cleared. Yesterday, we shipped uh, quite a few animals out, and I know we're not the only ones. Um, high winds in Tennessee, which kept us up all night, but that delayed a bunch of packages. Um, but I think they should all be clear now, so I think we're all good. But good. if anyone has good, pending good. animals coming in the mail, um, just fingers crossed, should be all right. Luckily, it's not freezing. You know what I mean? It wasn't freezing in Memphis. It was just really windy. So. Okay should be all right yeah who do you recommend for feeders feeder what feeder bugs feeder yep not feeder tarantulas feeder feeder insects to feed your feeder tarantula. insects like roaches crickets oh you have different guys um sure yeah yeah so roaches? who's yep. your roach so guy I, so well roaches I, I i walk to my bin right here and i just pull out whatever i need um, okay. obviously Darian with Morph Market's got a million Dubia. You can get Dubia just about anywhere, but never had anything bad to say about Dubia.com. Um, as far as crickets go, I know that this is going to be controversial, but I'm, I'm wrong. I'm right. <laughs> and you're wrong. <laughs> yes. And, uh, yes. Because the banded cricket is a superior cricket in just about every aspect they don't carry the viruses they're a healthier hardier cricket they have longer antennae it's more visually stimulating for the animal and gons has the banded cricket so if you have another vendor that's getting their crickets from gons great go with gons gons does not support the industry like timberline does i understand that however when it comes to your animals and the health of your animals i highly recommend you feed the banded cricket as opposed to the european brown they're not the same thing at all. So keep okay. that in mind. So Gons has the banded cricket, and that's what I would recommend feeding. I wish every supplier. Gons, I don't know. Uh, let me, I'm on a. Who knows? G H G H A N N. Yeah, Gons.com. No S. Just Gon? Okay, Gon.com. Um, I wish every vendor and supplier was 
get rid of the European brown cricket and just switch to the banded. And then I would say Timberline because Timberline donates to uh, US ARC. They do wonderful things for our industry and I really support them. However, it's not the same. They're not selling the same animal. So I, I would have well, to recommend. Well, hey, if enough people Gons. are buying uh, from Gons, maybe he'll have a little extra cheddar to throw yeah. in Ark's way. Right. There you Boo, go. look at All that. Right, you are boom. such a stud muffin. This is my bucket yarmulke. Uh, you need to wear that all the time. <laughs> I love that look. They gave this to me. Did um, they? I went to the US Art. Yeah, I bought a shirt. And um, I was like, I'm going to wear this on my show. And they're like, you do YouTube? And I said, yeah, I'm this guy. And they were like, never heard of you, but take a hat and a sticker. Hell yeah. And I was like, awesome. Thank you. Thanks, um, they gave away a lot of stuff at NARBC yeah. anyway. They That's their job. They gave away a ton of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, this is the biggest one they had. And I have one of the biggest skulls in human history. So I think it fits um, you perfectly. That's what I want to see yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. When you have a, um, a neurologist or a neuro, yeah, a neurologist look at, maybe measure your head with a tape measure and yeah. then look up a chart on his phone and his eyebrows go. And <laughs> I said, What's that mean? And he's like, you're, you're not even on the chart. Like you're, your head size is not up my chart. Uh, hell yeah. Ain't no thing like me set me. That's what I would have said. Yeah. Yeah. That's why that's I walk right. like holding this thing up. My neck muscles are insane. Right. Right. Um, You're doing so it. Looks I, good. I'm doing research for a story. So this is fiction. Keep that in mind. Okay. Um, if you were to have a spider the size of, say, <clears throat> a pony or a horse, Mm. What would be, in your opinion, what's the most terrifying spider at that size? Jumping spider, hands down. Hands down. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. That's that, what I was thinking. That would be the most dominant species on any planet that there ever ever was. <laughs> like, yeah, a jumping spider the size of a squirrel would uh, change the face of the earth for sure. I don't even like jumping spiders. I can't stand them. But um, what? That? Yeah, I don't. They're not my thing. Best I know spider you, ever. I know you love them. Uh, um, but I'm telling you right now, like those animals, um, if they were any larger, it would be a very different earth. That's for sure. Yeah. I just, yeah, I, I'm 100% on board with you. My daughter was this tonight. I was like, I'm going to go talk to Ryan. And she was like, is he the spider guy you talked about? I said, yes. So uh, she's like, is he going to give you a jumper? I said, no, but we're going to get a jumper. We're not going to give I'm gonna you give, we'll get, I'm going to so, give you a jumper. Yeah. Next time I see down. you. You get, no, so we have right. so yeah. many of them. Please take okay. them. All right. <laughs> when I see you in Schaumburg, you're going yep. to Schaumburg, right? Yes. Yeah. You better go. Okay. I'm I'll definitely going to be there. Spider. So, all right. I'll Wally and I are going to do a live. Right now. Oh, sweet. Wally and I are going to do a live there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Me and Wally. I turn. love Schaumburg. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to Wally. I love Schaumburg, man. That I just, we love that show. It's going to be hot, though. If you're going to Schaumburg just in stop. June. Well, here's the no, deal. Here's the it's deal. It's be not wonderful. hot in the venue, but bring some of that. Um, what is that crap they use in the mortuary where they put it under their nose? They don't smell. <laughs> uh, bring some of that because uh, yeah, it's going to be fragrant. Yeah. Some of those people yeah. are fragrant, you guys. So um, definitely, you know this. Oh, yeah. You know this. Yeah. Uh, no, Menagerie is not the next monster you're fighting. So I'm building a world for a role playing game that is um, animals are the people. Okay. And insects to uh, to offset that the animals are people now, so they don't. It won't be a thing in the society to like murder each other. Like the rabbit people won't be murdered constantly. Um, insects have exponentially grown, so obviously, okay. you know, they're instead of like a cougar, there's going to be like a giant tarantula or a giant whatever. Not necessarily yeah. giant, but like horse sized, right? Uh, yeah. There'll be beasts of burden. There'll be livestock. There'll be predators. Um, and I was thinking a jumper. I might have to keep the jumper small. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, that sounds cool though. I'm excited. That sounds neat. But yeah, That's um, a cool idea. Yeah, yeah. Big old jumping spider would be the most um, terrifying thing. I think. I think if they were the size of chipmunks, I still think they were even that big. It would be. They would be a problem. I mean, you'd have sure. birds would be like. You know, birds would be endangered unless they laid like thirty eggs at a time. So the only thing that people. 
people would be endangered. I'm telling you, if they were that big. From a chipmunk sized jumper? I really think so, yes. Wow. I don't, yeah, I mean, well, I think about think about what a jumping spider at its size can do now, like at a one inch size, what they are capable of. Now you put the musculature and everything behind something the size of a chipmunk, and the yeah. th so, uh, fangs that like exponentially grow, this like that big, like grow with the size of a chipmunk. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I, it, yeah, we'd be in trouble for sure. I think if they worked mm -hmm. as a team, maybe, but I don't think they would see us as prey. I don't. That would be like. Um, like if a weasel saw us as prey, you know what I mean? Like uh, a weasel. Maybe a weasel the size of a horse would mess you up. You would be gone. There, you'd have sure. no chance against a horse-sized weasel, for but, sure, or a horse-sized house cat, even. But chipmunk. All right, squirrel for chipmunk. sure, hundred percent. Squirrel, I'm saying you're wrong. Chipmunk, I, I think we could probably <laughs> figure it out. But squirrel, yeah, we're we're effed. We are effed. We're effed. We're done. Yeah, we're done. We are. We're done. I'm, I'm, that, They're already smarter than us. So, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah, now I want a horse uh, weasel. <laughs> who has crazy bugs and pods? I forget who everybody's little code name is. Corey, that's Corey. That's Corey Allen. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. I didn't see you there. So R Ryan has a booth. You have to go find him. So. Corey was vending uh, across from us at Tinley um, next to Cornbread. Brittany at Cornbread Exotics. Yeah, they set up okay. next to each other. Yeah. I want all of the non-ball python people to be in one corner. We talked about that. Yeah, we were thinking we that would be a good I, I idea. Think, uh, yeah, I need to talk to Brian and, um, was it Sean? The guy who runs the whole thing? Bob. Brian and Bob. Bob. That's it, Bob. Okay. Um, I knew them a long time ago before... I think it was when NARBC was starting up when they were just uh, Chicago Reptile. Yep. House. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that was when I, I was in there and talking with them all the time in their store. Um, and it, I mean, the store is still great, but they're just huge, just huge now. So. Oh, geez. Yeah. It's crazy. They're That's big, the yeah, spot. Very influential. Mm -hmm. And it always yeah. has been. It always has been. So um, I have enough ball pythons, don't need to see anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's crazy though. Like they still sell. I cannot believe how um, popular ball pythons still are, and um, so there is definitely a place for them. I know um, some people who are not into the game get really tired of seeing yeah. it, but they wouldn't be around if there weren't so many people interested. You know what I mean? They just yeah. they wouldn't be. Yeah, I've seen some uh, some pictures of some really cool new morphs that are like almost neon, like really yeah. Cool. I held one the other day, uh, to, uh, run it. Uh, Tony with uh, Hardwired Exotics brought a couple of these things. They're called banana clowns. They're like okay. neon yellow and orange and purple. I'm like, why don't we have these things? Purple. These are sweet. Yeah. They're like purple, neon, yellow, and orange. I was like, this is the coolest. <laughs> I was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. Best comment ever. I want this T-shirt for NARBC. I need to make this T-shirt. What do you get? Um... Nothing wrong just, with balls, just not my bag. That's bravo, bravo. I was trying to find um, Scott with Boss Hogs gave us these stickers that say, I have no balls. I have no oh, balls. Oh, I don't. I, yeah, I have no yeah, balls. Yeah, I did have my Aunt Mantis. I had the two. I think, I'm pretty sure it was two. It was two. My problem with uh, my problem with the Aunt Mantis, Corey, they were cool as adults, but they only looked like an ant, like the first three instars. Like that was it. It's after that, it was like, okay, it's a mantis. It's a dark mantis, like green on the inside of the, the arms, but um, the pincers, but like, so the babies look like ants. They're little ant mimics. So, yeah. but I was afraid to put them with an ant because I just have the big campanotis. I just have the big, uh... but yeah, Corey had the, uh, the ant mantis and I was excited. They were they were cool. Don't get me wrong; they were really cool. But like, I was I wanted them to be ants forever. And yeah, yeah. That's not what happened. It's not what happened. So, a Have lot you of seen those. Was, uh, um, <clears throat> what do you call those? The, the 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 jumping spiders that mimic ants. Have you seen photos of those? Yes. Crazy. There's so many different species. It's so so wild. Yeah, I want one uh, so bad to see because I I mean I could feed it forever. I have my ant colonies back up to like seven thousand, I think, again. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm about to do another cull. Like that's just the shop vac. And uh, <laughs> really, is that sorry? How it works? <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I moved her, uh, so I built the hundred gallon tank, and then connected it to the thirty that she was in, because every square centimeter millimeter of the 30 gallon was covered in ants it was just a mass oh, wow. constantly moving wow. and i said okay i have to i totally rushed the 100 gallon to get it completed uh to get it workable really it wasn't even it's not done it's just workable mm -hmm. and uh so i connected the two tanks and within two days the whole thing was just covered like every square inch was covered in ants Wow. So I got out of the shop back. I was like, sorry, man. Cause everybody I talked to my aunt, people were like, you have 10,000 plus 10,000 plus ants in that colony. Wow. Um, Cause 130 gallons just completely covered. Yeah. And so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was, uh, it was not good. Can you borrow a horned lizard for a couple of days? <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, right. Um, I, I got to find out that guy's secret for keeping ants because uh, I, I just found a video of a guy who, uh, he's German, of course. All the like innovators are German in the hobbies. Yes, they're amazing. Um, so he keeps horned lizards. He keeps desert horned lizards, and then he keeps ants to feed them. And I don't know yep. if he's just catching them in the wild, or he has massive colonies, or yeah, because how many those ants. Phrenosoma eat a lot. I've cared for several Phrenosoma um, in zoos, and they eat a lot. Um, so it's really interesting, like. I'd be, I'd be very curious to know. You could almost have to produce them yourself. There's no way you could go out and spend that much time catching ants unless you have ants just all over your property and you can catch them in droves because those animals literally eat like all day long. And I, I feel like they're eating a specific kind of ant too. Like, you know what I mean? He didn't seem to, he just fed them ants. Like it wasn't just ants in general. I don't think it I was think like, it just looked like other carpenter ants. They seem pretty large, but he said that like their stomach is 30% larger per, for their body ratio. It's like one of the biggest mm. stomachs in the animal kingdom, let alone like reptiles. Like it's, yeah. it's huge. Um, so yeah, they must eat a lot. And if they, if all they really should be eating is ants, because people were like, oh, you can substitute with, uh, like white dwarfs or something and like if you could yeah. bulk it up with that and they'd be fine great but yeah i feel like a couple even a couple would decimate my colony in a month you know oh yes yeah they just eat all those all numbers the time. yeah yeah they wouldn't recover and then there's other species that breed really fast but they can be um like i'm thinking uh the the, the harvester ants a lot of the harvester ants have a toxin that is specifically geared against reptiles so mm. I wouldn't know. Okay. I'm sure they have some resistance to like ant stings and stuff, but I don't know if that would be, I would never risk that, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't know enough. I know. I don't know. I know. I think formic acid is the thing that they, I got to Google that. In fact, hold on. I'm going to Google that. It's not the formic Google. acid. That's it's a not that. That isn't. It's it. not okay. the formic acid. There's some kind of enzymes. He says albumin. Okay. He said it with a German accent. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's albumin that he was that talking about right. being the main, the main thing that they think. They don't know for sure, but they think that's the thing. But he said the formic acid is 100% myth. Like it's it is okay. It's not a thing. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, good to know. We're so, far off topic. so good that we're so far off topic. I don't care. Um, it's what makes this awesome. <laughs> um, I, I yeah. do want to get. Uh, I do want to get. There's a jumper that. Um, eats other spiders though i, I want to get that one have you seen it it looks like a wind-up toy it's like no kind of hairy like the limbs are real weird and it moves like kind of like a like a mantis or a chameleon it moves like it wants to be a, a piece of debris just kind of yeah i think i know what you're moving. talking about um, yeah but it will go and like pluck on a spider's web so it'll come out to oh, get yeah, whatever yeah. it is and then it'll jump it or it'll hang down into the web and grab it in its own web and it dude it's amazing that's so yeah, cool that's you need have you read children of time do you know what that is i don't do you, even know what that is no do you like <clears> to read <throat> you do you read books i love to read yeah yeah i highly 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 recommend you read children of time because it's essentially following a group of you know that thing you were just talking about where the animals are larger they're like 
I don't know what yeah. that word is, macro. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, so this takes place far in the future. Humankind has blown up Earth. There's no more Earth. They're, they're yeah. traveling the, st the stars to find, uh, colonize other planets. And it's following jumping spiders, a group of jumping spiders that are large and they're navigating this yeah. new planet. Um, and it sounds just like that, but anyway, like these, it really speaks to their intelligence. Like the author, author clearly spent a lot of time studying jumping spiders and their behavior and their ecology, um, and he just translated that into this fictional book that's all about human, like evolution, essentially like accelerated evolution. And uh, it's super cool. You have to read it. I love it. I don't like books. I don't like to read, which is strange, but it's a good book. You have to read it. So the that jumping book. spiders are traveling through space. They're not. No. So basically. Okay if i can remember correctly they're on a planet where accelerated evolution has already taken place and like that's why okay. the insects and the invertebrates are large i think everything on the planet is large and then the traveling human population on this starship gets to this planet and has to like navigate it with all of these very large animals that have like uh, have evolved because of accelerated evolution because of some i don't know what it is some something <laughs> yeah it's, it's super wow. cool it's a great book yeah. If I was, uh, if there was one giant centipede there, I would just eat. I'd be out. I'd be like, oh, I'm going to yeah. nose dive onto this rock. Like, I'm out. I can't. Same. I can't die that way. I feel like that'd be the worst death. Just. Yeah. I have, we have a big one right over there. And I, watching that thing every day, to, it just freaks me out. I'm like, man, you guys are something else. <laughs> why do you, why do you they're why? It, it was a birthday present for Jessica. She wanted it. So, you know. <sighs> That's that's um, how that happened. Yeah, they're wild. That's dude. a deal breaker for me. That that would be a deal breaker for me. I'd be like, uh, I love you, but <laughs> yeah, trust <laughs> you need me. to reassess. <laughs> you know, it hasn't been that bad, but it's in like a super tall enclosure. It's got a lot of soil and detritus yeah. and leaf litter and whatnot, but like it cannot yeah. physically reach the top, and so that's oh, kind of that's kind of our compromise. But um, smart, yeah. They're that's my most nope animal. Yeah, well, if it got, if it gets out, I'm done. I'll be like, Jess, I'll come back when it, when you find it or kill it or something. I'm like, I'm not staying here. <laughs> yeah, they're wild. I've seen too many. Uh, they move crazy. They're just oh, yeah, skeevy. I don't know. It's no good. Yeah, they are no good. You're right. They're no good. They're like a curse. I'm like they just remind me of like a bad curse. I don't know. But they're super cool. I love them. Like they're beautiful animals. But I, they just, I'm not there with them. Yeah. You know I, mean? I see some sometimes and I'm excited by the colors. Like I, I get yep. more into like the visual of the animal, but then I see it move and I'm like, no, I'm out. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out they're too fast too like just alien. I don't know. And they're too, I want them to be stupid, but they seem so smart. Oh, they're incredible. They're, they are smart. Yes. <clears throat> they're smart. Yeah. Like in their own right. Right. Yeah. 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 At what they do. Yeah. They're smart yeah. at murder. Yeah. So, yeah, which is that makes them a nope. Like if they were smart at like hard boiling eggs, okay, yeah, come live with me. That's fine. Yeah, but it's amazing because jumping spiders, in their own right, that's like what they do. They're like apex little predators in their little world. You know what I mean? Like they're very yeah. good at killing things. But like we look at those, we're like, oh, they're cute. <laughs> like you know what I mean? But I've never. Like, oh, they're just cute. I've never had a jumper on me and been like, ah, like I'm, I know. Like I, yeah. you know. You're right. What do we have centipedes like this in the wild? I'm in Illinois. Like our centipedes are maybe like this. Yeah, like, you have like soil centipedes that don't even have eyes. Like, yeah. like you know what I mean? Just, Probably. Yeah. 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 And I can't, I can't deal with them. But um, like if I'm digging in my garden, I'm like, oh, I'll take a break till they leave. Like there's too many yeah. right here. I'm gonna take a break. Uh, yeah. And there's no way they can harm me. But if it's a jumper, I'll take a break because I'm gonna play with this jumping spider for a little while. Yeah, it's your little friend. <laughs> yeah, it's different. Yeah. It's totally different. But you're right. They are. They would have no hesitation in devouring us if they had the opportunity. 100%. Yeah. If they had the chance, they'd be like, huh. That's probably what they're yeah. doing when they get on you and they're like, how do I get you in my mouth? How does yeah, yeah. We interpret it as like a cute and inquisitive nature, but they're probably like, can I can I eat this thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. definitely. That's all it is. Yeah. Which is wild. Which is wild. Yeah, so you have, you're surrounded by a million apex predators right now. Oh, yeah, man. They're all over the place. They're all out. They're like, are you going to feed me or what, dude? Well, yeah. actually, our tarantulas, they're kind of like prey items too, right? To a lot of species. Yeah, there's some. Uh, 
there's birds uh, will eat them for sure. They will. Some of them will also eat birds, although rare. Um, I imagine there's some mammals that will eat them as well. Yeah, but not, it's not a big deal. It just depends. No, not so much. No. Okay. They're, they're, plus, they're real good at like they're they're ambush. You know what I mean? Like most of them are ambush, so they're not really like out. Yeah. Unless they're a mature male, like mature males get picked off all day long, but most of them are just sitting and waiting in their respective yeah. safe places. So predation's not a huge thing for them. Yeah. Okay. They just sit in there. Cause I saw a study where somebody did, um, they went back to the same area and would check burrows and they had, you probably saw the study. They had like the oldest known tarantula ever. And it was like one specimen that was in the wild, but she would check on it couple times a year she'd go back yeah. to the area to check and it was like the same one it was i don't even remember it was some ridiculous like 50 years old or something it was crazy it was i believe like it email yeah yeah i believe it so, once they get in their spot so you know that that really speaks to how often they are predated upon you know what i mean but um yeah i imagine when they're small when they're babies you know that's why the clutch size is so large is because there's just their natural prey items at that size for so many different things but once they get large and they know how to navigate yeah. life, I would imagine it, it's over. They don't get eaten very much. Yeah. Yeah. Now, another picture I saw of yours in a video, uh, several actually, is um, this boggles me for spider keepers. But uh, you get the egg sack and then um, you pull it open. <laughs> so there are, I don't know, 150,000. Uh, <laughs> Tiny <laughs> exactly spider. exactly that everywhere many, yes every time yeah yep. so why why bust it open what's the point uh so we don't um but i know why yeah. keepers do and we have we have before um so the moms when they're naturally rearing that brood will turn them yeah they're and like and i've watched my animals do it they move them up and down the cork tube or the burrow all day long and they'll like yeah position them to like uh get warm and bask the brood and then they'll turn them right so the, the temperature yeah yeah all those things so the animal's constantly moving the egg sac around right they're not just like sitting stagnant yeah. now when you remove that from that mom now it's sitting still and like you could imagine if the eggs are not tumbling and the babies are going through all these metabolic processes that like they could get stuck and they could be problematic if they're just sitting stagnant or okay. not, not yeah. tumbling and moving. Right. Um, so what a lot of people do is they'll take, they'll remove the egg sac, they'll pull that and then they'll, sp they'll spill the eggs or the eggs with legs or whatever instar the, the babies are at and they'll spill them out onto something so that it can they're not sitting on top of one another they're like flat on a surface and then allow yeah. them to develop that way um which is great it makes sense it's actually easier to do it that way because now you're not trying to catch a hundred thousand hundred thousand babies with mom <laughs> you know what i mean when when they're mobile right because that, that yeah. is a pain yeah. in the ass it is hard to do so that's the benefit of doing there. it that way and, and mom's mom. there you got to deal with mom yeah, yeah mom's yeah mom is never happy when you're taking no. babies away right so mom is always problematic but um i think i've told you this before we don't um because we give the moms what they need in tank to successfully rear their brood and that means temperature thermal gradients we give them all of that we miss yep. them we make sure they have the humidity the for the some reason cycle. the day and the night yep yep we give them the photo <laughs> periods and everything so it's just easier for us to do it that way and our babies always, without fail, come out much larger than if we pull the babies. So our babies, when they come out with mom, they already have a head start. They're already bigger than somebody yeah. who pulled their egg sac and reared them that way. I don't know what that is. I don't know why. Don't ask because I can't tell you. I'm just telling you what happens. <laughs> and that's they're just big. They're just bigger and they're more well started and they just do better that way. So that's why we don't. I, mean, I hear it. Nature. You're not going to ever... I, I know why. I'll tell you why. And if I'm going to quote you, if you think different, you're wrong. So suck it. Deal. <laughs> um, Deal. That's how millions and millions of years of evolution intended it to be. And yep. when we try to take that into our own uh, agency and yeah. do it ourselves, we're not going to match that. Like we're not. You can do as much as you want. You're not going to match it. So yeah. Like like even your spiders, if they were out in the wild in a um, in a predator-free zone. 
you know, somehow you found them predator free zone in their native environment, they would do better than in your care. Hundred percent. So, one hundred percent. I mean, yep. So, but when you take all that agency, like the mom knows what she's doing. She's not. She's made for this. She's made to make more. That's like the number one priority of every organism. You is got to it. Make for organisms. So yes. What is an average? What is an average egg sac hold? By the way. Oh, it just depends. That could be that. Could, that could be twenty-five. That could be two hundred and fifty. It just depends. Sometimes okay. there's more All than right. that. Depends on the species. Yeah, yeah. On average, I think with the species we work with, anywhere from fifty to one hundred and fifty is about average. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now, then they do instars inside the, the egg sac too, right? They molt a couple times while they're in there. Yep. Generally. Yeah. Usually, once they're once they're fuzzy, which is usually second instar for some species, that's third instar. Once they're second, that's when mom will tear them open and let them come out. Okay. So she has to tear them open. They're not getting out on their own. Somebody's got to tear that thing off. Yeah, they might be able to, um, but I've always seen mom do it. Mom always opens them up. They're, they're, you know, she knows what's going on because she's moving them around, you know, tumbling them yeah. for 60 plus days. So she knows, what, she knows what's going on. She'll tear them open Crazy. and spill them out. Yeah, Crazy. definitely. I don't know yep. why tarantulas just don't bother me anymore. I just got over it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And it they never just, bothered me. Really not that bad. Yeah, they never really bothered me. I just didn't get it. I still am not like, oh, tarantulas, but I mean they're cool. I mean, yeah, wrong. they're cool. I just have no real. I would love to see what. I, I mean, I would love to go to. I've always wanted. I've seen tarantulas in the wild, but like I would love to go really, really see them in the Amazon. You know, I think for me that would be uh, that would be the coolest damn thing. But supposedly they're just like everywhere. They're like, it's like fodder, you know, they're just like everywhere. Um, but so the people there don't even care. The, the Amazon people or whatever in the Amazon, like they don't, they don't even care. They're like, no, they're yeah, all over people's it. houses. They're in restaurants. They're fucking everywhere. They're just on everything. You know what I mean? Just, just surviving, you know, um, at all hours of the day, world. you'll see them. I know. But the environment there is just made for them. And they, you know, they're so opportunistic. I see a lot of people try to say, oh, well, those, they live on the side of a house. They don't need a tree hollow and this and other thing. It's like, yeah, but they're in the environment that there's more going on in that yeah. environment than just like a tree with bark versus a downspout. You know what I mean? Like there, there's more yeah. than just that. The, the animals, like we have animals that take root, like our birds will nest on our deck. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it doesn't have to, yeah. there's more going on than just that, than just that structure, you know? Like, but, can they live in a shoebox, a plastic shoebox? Absolutely. With, with yeah. uh, some yeah. sand and a, a overturned, um, little flower pot sure yeah sure they can pot. could you live yeah. in an eight by six cell the rest of your life absolutely you and eat mcdonald's yeah you totally could yeah From if someone fed you, you and totally. kept you water and uh clean yeah. your poops like you could live in that too yep yeah absolutely you could you totally could so are they higher organisms i i think so like in their own right yeah definitely like that's just the, any math test but yeah yeah, but intelligence, like you, you could argue like plants and trees are intelligent, right? So it's like it's all how you're quantifying intelligence. Plants have a higher intelligence than we do in certain aspects. You know what I mean? But like you're right, are they going to do math and solve calculus? No, but they're intelligent in ways that we're not, right? So that's another that argue, episode. Yeah, that you're we coming back on for plants are intelligent. <laughs> yeah, fungus and all that, man, definitely way more intelligent than we are in certain aspects, right? I need to I need to get an episode about mycelium. Yeah, we can talk about that. I could watch yeah. hours and hours of episode of uh, who's the one guy? Who's the one guy? Paul that's making, uh, yes, uh, I could watch that guy for hours and hours and hours. So same. I love how passionate trying to get, he is about that. And, uh, yeah, and I'm trying to get my therapist to get me some like psychoactives to see if that helps my situations. Yes, because um, that's fascinating too. Yeah, yes. not for like recreational use yet. Right. But right. <laughs> to see if it'll, you know, do something yeah. to, to mm -hmm. fix because they, you know, there's all kinds of products out there right now, but they're probably a lot of them are full of shit. But yeah. I think if I saw one that he recommended, I'd be down. Yeah. I am a huge proponent of uh, psychedelic medicine, all that. I, I think that, that that would do do you some good. You got a question? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's just a statement. Like, this would be cool. Moon's been watching a specific tarantula. God, that'd be cool. I we yeah, we followed uh, 
uh, different wolf spiders out here even for just the summer. And it's, it's, they're such creatures of habit. Like it, it's super yeah. interesting to watch. They'll come back to the same spot. If it works for them, they're not going anywhere. Like that's where they're going to make it work. Yeah. They just mark their den or figure out where their den is and just come back year after year. Right. They're fantastic. That's their spot. Um, I got one more question for you. Go for it. It's a new thing we're doing here. So uh, is Jess still there too? No, she took off on me. I don't know where she is. Probably dealing with the dogs. She knew this was coming. So um, probably. you get one superpower, but you get to pick it. What is it? One superpower. Yep. Any superpower. You get. You can't pick like, oh, I'm Superman, because that's a dick no, move. No, 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 no. Um, One superpower. Ryan's a thinker. Other people were like, "What?" And they. Uh, we were just talking about psychedelics, right? We were. My super, yeah. My my superpower. My first answer is be like, I would just love to. I would love to fly, but my superpower would be to access whatever that is, and only some people are going to get this, but whatever that is that people are experiencing and describing under the influence of psychedelic medicine, it would be to access that without having to use the substance. That would be my superpower, whatever that is, because that is they're doing, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with all of those studies that they're currently doing and mapping DMT and like all of that. Yeah. yeah, uh, You're on the I'm, next level. You're on like another level of consciousness apparently. Well, you're, they're all going to a place and they're describing the same thing. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, whatever that is, I would love to explore and understand that without having to use a substance. Because whatever that is, is clearly relevant in some way or another. It's clearly there. Yeah. Um, and I would love to know what that is. So that would be my superpower. And uh, what, what that does for humanity or anything else, I don't know. <laughs> but well, whatever that is, I feel like it's relevant. And that's, uh, <laughs> I would like to know what that is. I feel like yeah. it definitely couldn't hurt. Yeah, I, I didn't believe in that at all until I, because I heard Joe Rogan talk about it, right, uh, back in the day. Sure. Yeah, he'll still talk yeah. about it now. Um, but I heard mm -hmm. him talk about it back in the day, and I was like, this sounds really dumb. Like, he was talking about how yeah. important it is and blah, blah, blah. And then I heard several other people that, not on his show, just randos, not randos, but people that, like, were intelligent and knew what they were doing, and not to discredit Joe's intelligence. Um, but... <laughs> They were describing <laughs> the same thing using different words, but if you thought about Correct. it, you're like, it's they're saying the same thing, um, yes. which is wild to me. Um, because what he was describing was super wild and like how he was describing it and what his interpretation of it was, right? Um, we're like these little well, it, just sounds, it just sounds like beings. it's like you're just messed up on drugs, you're like you just, or you're elves. just what do they crazy. call them, elves? Yeah, people have described that. I've heard um, mantises being described before, too. Um, yeah, I don't know. The landscape sounds very strange, but there's a reoccurring theme there. And I just, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is or yeah. what it's, what, how it's relevant, but um, I don't know what that is. I just want to know what that is. So that, I it mean, I would love to say like... like yeah, well, yeah, it would, yeah. What if it's just like like a sewer and like like <laughs> nothing relevant or powerful? It's just like a like just some stupid byproduct of our evolution that's like taking a dump or something. Like I don't know, like, yeah, you know. Yeah. Or uh, like my thought was just like, what if it's just that's how it affects your perception? Like everybody's correct. brain is essentially the same, so that's yeah. how it like filters. Like putting on glasses, you know, everybody sees better with their glasses. Like the same thing. Like it's just oh, you just yeah. This is how it makes your brain react to things. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think there's something else there. I like that. I like well, that I lot. also yeah. I feel like yeah. I for those of, I mean, I'm not talking about me, of course, but those of us who may have had these experiences, um, know how powerful they are, and like there's definitely something there, and it would be really like cool to access that. Um, without without the substance. So anyway, that would be my superpower. I think power. Corey's down. Corey's down yeah. with mushrooms. Apparently, his logo is a mantis on a mushroom. Yeah. So it's the psychedelic mantis on the mushroom. See, now when we speak to intelligence, we're talking about a substance that can't talk, it can't see, it can't do anything. Yet, it clearly has a purpose, and it's found its way more and more 
into society, right? It is finding its way yeah. and it's, it, it, is, it is fulfilling its purpose and it's doing it without talking or seeing or doing any math. It's just being, right? Which is intelligence in and yeah. of itself. I find that interesting. We were just talking about intelligence, mm. you know what I mean? But anyway, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, yeah. That, could be, that could be another talk. That can be for next time. We'll get philosophical next time. We'll just be, uh, uh, we you should. Know, it'll be, you know, whatever. Yeah. Guys, that's going to do it. So go to, um, uh, Marshall Arachnids, look at his stuff, go check out the, um, what is the name of the, I'm going to put a run it reptile here. expo. Run it reptile. Yep. 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 Go to run it reptile expo.com. Um, we just did an event in Chattanooga. It was a weekend event. Um, it was awesome. Thank you again. Um, and Heather, I know you showed up. Thank you guys so much for uh, showing up and participating in that. Um, just come hang. It's fun. It's just a fun time. And you never know, you might find something you need or want and uh, you get a good deal on it. And there's that you can find, uh, I'll, uh, I'll pimp stuff for you if you want. I'll, I'll give great descriptors for animals if you want. Yeah, that would be perfect. And you also need to send me your stickers because apparently people want your stickers and I would love to give them your stickers. So that'd be awesome. I have a ton. So I perfect. have uh, 80 some left. I'll send you like 40. I don't. Yeah, remember. that will go uh, in 40. Yeah, it's on your thing, right? You put people. it right on your your display, right? It's right there. Well, that's how people saw it. Yeah. 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 But I mean, I'm about to ship out 250 packages. Like I would love to put your put your logo in there and send it to 250 people. More. You know what I mean? Seriously. That'd be awesome. I'll get some more. Yep. Um, yeah, guys, to so do that, we have our Patreon. We have merch at fourthwall.com. Um, that's super fun. If you don't want to buy anything, just go and read the descriptions. Uh, give me some feedback because I spent a lot of uh, stream of thought, stream of consciousness time on those, and they're a lot of fun. And <laughs> I thought so. Maybe you won't, but um, it's cool. That would support the show, too. I brought the prices way down on all the merch because their prices were a little ridiculous. So I feel like it's really reasonable and it would support the show and it looks cool. And all the stuff there is super comfortable and good size. So yeah, go do all those things. Go support all those things. I need so, a t-shirt. Uh, what did you say it was? Fourthwall.com. I think Fourth the wall. link is in the description. So is that just um, like a print print on demand? Yeah, it's one of those. Awesome. So, but they have okay. really cool. They've got hoodies. They've got. I've only put my stuff on a couple of things. There's denim hats. There's a denim jacket. Hey. A black, black jean jacket. I want to get that. I love a jean Heck jacket, yeah. and it's got it embroidered. Um, there's some. There's some embroidered gear. There's some like just the, you know, sticker thing. Whatever, not sticker, but the vinyl, um, or whatever that is. I don't know what it is, but. Yeah. Um, the shirts, I have one of their shirts with something else that is so soft. Like, oh my God, it's so soft. I can't recommend it enough. So anyway, um, go check that stuff out. So, and uh, guys, have a great week. Next week we are, I think we're talking to Wally. Speaking Heck of yeah. Wally. Yeah, next week's April, April 2nd. We're talking to Wally. So April Fools. April Fools, it's Nanette. We're going to talk to Wally about uh, how to prepare for an expo for vending an expo. So um, that's a big deal. I feel like Heck so you yeah. watch one too. maybe you'll pick something up. So uh, I'll see you guys later. And I'm going to talk to Ryan off the air because we're best friends. So the best. Love you guys.